Yeah, you guys, that old Charlie Tango Mike, just doing a bit of a test here. So I'm just going to flick that antenna back onto the SDR. I've currently got the uh, the VFO on 3685, which is feeding into the the direct conversion SDR front end. The output of that is going then into the Teensy, and as you can see there. Um, I've got the screen set up and you can sort of see I'm just doing a quick FFT across what I'm receiving which is roughly uh, 15 kilohertz you're seeing from left to right there and uh, I'm just starting the plot 15 or so um, bins it's a it's a 1024 FFT which creates 511 bins and I'm starting about 15 in to uh, get around all that sort of DC noise that comes in but uh, as you can see there it works um, quite well so in terms of the code itself um, it's, it's this audio library that Paul has created for the Teensy really is quite simple to use um, just essentially setting it up it's just an audio um, library up here that gets sucked in uh, this is just defining the constants for the screen. Uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a screen I've had in the junk box for quite some time now, and it's a relatively fast. It's a 128 by 160 screen, 1.8 inches. Um, there, I'm just sort of uh, it's, it's well, I'm just using the Adafruit library to um, to substantiate it, and uh, those pins there are the microcontroller pins which were defined up here. And this here is just setting up with the audio shield. Uh, essentially what you need to do to behind the scenes create the code to hook up the audio panel into the microcontroller so I'm just using the defaults um, they get created by the library you can certainly need to find these as your own ones but these are the set ones so it's an audio input I've just decided to call it audio input it's the default I could make that anything I like um, I've thrown in a mixer straight away on the input um, which I'm applying some gain to, so it's essentially akin to an RF amplifier, or well, in this particular case, because it's audio, it's an audio amplifier equivalent uh, in hardware, but this is in software. And here goes the 1024 Fast Fourier Transform, um, which I've just called my FFT. Again, that's a typical default that gets used. You could call that whatever you like. Here you hook up the patch panels. Patch cord is a term that's used by the library. So I'm hooking up the audio input left, which is input 0, right would be 1. I'm applying to the input amplifier, which is that mixer, and I'm putting it into uh, the first input, which is typical uh, 0. And then I'm taking a second patch cord, and that's um, the input amp output, which is 0. Because the left hand side of the brackets is always the um, the source and then destination. So the source in this particular case will be the output of the audio amp. And I'm feeding that into the fast Fourier transform input zero. Um, I won't go into all the code here. I'm just substantiating the audio shield, so just enabling it. Uh, in the setup, just turning the screen on. Uh, enabling the audio shield. You can see the enable. Um, I'm selecting the input to be my input, which I'd earlier on defined as being, um, I won't go back into it, was input. But of interest here, so input amp dot gain. So if you recall, input amp is what I called the mixer. And I'm now setting the gain for input zero to be 40. Uh, and this number here can be between zero and 32,000 if I call. Um, I've found that if I have that sitting on 100, then I'm sort of driving the FFT off the screen so at the moment uh, that's a gain of 40 I'm getting that much coming through what I'll do later on um, in line with sort of typical SDR software that's where you would um, have variable gain on your waterfall and your FFT um, so yeah, this is just purely test code to, to get things up and running and then I'll start to enhance it. But this is just to essentially prove that I can drive the screen. Uh, the loop here, all the loop is doing is just waiting until the fast Fourier transform has done all its number crunching and is available. And then it plots it. 
um, just doing some few tests here. Initially I was just plotting the first 80 bins, but now I've gone up to 512. The way the fast Fourier transform works, it's, it's a 1024 FFT, but you get available to yourself um, roughly 511 bins. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm plotting every fourth. I have to do that because my screen's only 160 wide. So uh, if I skip every fourth, then I'm pretty well covering the whole band and uh, you know, as you can see from the plot, it's not too bad. I'm not missing any any great detail. Then all this bit of code down here is doing is just drawing the line starting from the bottom to the top, and then the first part is green and the second part is black. Um, I suppose this is the easiest way of doing it. Um, yeah, so that's essentially that's how it's working. Um, I'm not entirely sure how people want to run these videos, I'm more than happy to sort of continue doing this and sort of pointing out some ideas and code. If people find that interesting, please let me know. Otherwise, you know, I can wait to the very end. But um, I really do want to sort of inspire, or you know, I am, and I'll, I'll say this: I am not an expert in this in any way, shape, or form. This is all about me wanting to sort of understand more and learn and um, like I say the latest project is the, is the SDR project so I want to sort of start with SDR 101 and then uh, start to use Paul's very good audio libraries to um, to set that up which is essentially what um, Rice, uh, Reece, I think his name is, did um, over at Open Emitter um, he did exactly the same thing but like I say I'm, I'm quite keen to, sort of, to learn and do it from scratch Anyway, I think someone earlier on wanted to sort of see some more closer detail of the, the various circuits. So um, uh, that there is the, as I pointed out before, the, the VFO is coming in and it's being split up with the uh, in-phase and quadrature. Uh, because this is 5 volts peak to peak and these are 7 dBm devices, which is 1.414 volts peak to peak, uh, it just goes through a small voltage divider, um, gets it split in half, and then... I found I had to apply another 200 ohm resistor just to just to not overdrive the uh, the DBMs, uh, the double balance mixers, and it seems to work quite well. Uh, just a bit of filtering there for the five volts uh, driving the uh, that chip, um, and the two quadrature signals coming out, going to each of the two. Let's say, uh, each of the two mixers. Um, the outputs of the mixers directly into a very simple uh, audio low-pass filter and then through a uh, electric capacitor to just to decouple it before I feed it into the um, into the audio amp. Um, input is a uh, simple 3904 amplifier. Uh, it's running in... Uh, what, was, what was the voltage gain I decided to do in the end? I designed it for 50 ohms input so it's got about a 38 milliamp ice uh, uh, collector current and uh, I don't double check what the game was, but it works quite well. Um, the output of that is into the primary of the broadband transformer, and the secondary is just two um, bifold wound uh, cores. I think I because uh, I wanted to match roughly the impedance, so 50 ohms here back into the collector here. So um, it was six turns, so 12 turns on the primary, six turns on the secondary. Um, again. Uh, I ran out of 51 ohm resistors, so these are just 47 ohms, just to provide uh, a roughly good uh, sort of 50 ohms um, input impedance for the uh, for the mixers, and that seems to work quite well. Uh, so RF comes in through a simple um, 80 meter bandpass filter, which I've got tuned to roughly uh, 3.6 um, megs, and the output of that's going into the amplifier. So that's pretty well the um, the, the receiver front end, nice and simple. So once again I will continue plotting along with this and uh, I will report back. Just for interest sake, um, with the earlier version of the TNC I had I didn't have available all these extended pins so I had to use uh, some pins that were being not so much shared but I had to identify pins that weren't being used by the shield the audio shield in my first version. That's just a trick for young players and it caught me out and it took me a while to work out what the heck was going on. But the beauty of this Teensy here, which is actually a 3.5, not a 3.6, I um, got that wrong in my last vid. Um, there's a whole lot of extra 
uh, IO pins here over and above what's required for the audio shield so it was nice and easy so I just picked the first five and um, and that's all I needed to drive the screen uh, just be aware this particular device here is a 3.3 volt device you can't put anything more into the pins uh, and the screen here is working quite happily on 3.3 volts so I'm just picking off um, picking off down there anyway I'll uh, close from there. This is a 10 minute video. I apologise if it's a bit too long, but um, hopefully that will provide um, a little bit of input. And like I say, if people find this interesting, please sing out. If not, what would you like to like to see? And we'll go from there. Anyway, regards, uh, 73s and uh, ZL2 Charlie Tango Mike out.